Today, we are gonna be painting up Crossbones, my favorite Marvel superhero or villain, or maybe he's DC. Look, I don't know, to be honest. The one thing I do know about Crossbones from a quick search is that he wears all black, which when it comes to painting is rather boring. So we're gonna spice that up a little bit. But first, let's get to his skin, what little there is to paint here. So we're gonna do things a little bit differently here just because I wanna show you a different style of painting. We're actually gonna start with our base coat and we're gonna be using the Vallejo Panzer Aces trifecta of three colors here. So we begin with our base coat and then we mix our flesh base with our shade, our shadows flesh, and we're gonna block that in to the areas where we want shade. Now we do not have the paint thinned here. We're not layering. I'm just very roughly blocking in the shadows at this point. Then we do the exact same thing for the highlights, flesh base mixed with highlights flesh. And once again, just blocking in the areas where the highlights should go. Again, paint not very thin here, we're not layering, just putting blotches in the correct places. Now finally, here's where the blending comes in. We go back to our original base coat, thinned this time, and we soften the edges around our shadows and our highlights. So this differs from the traditional layering method that I always show, because right now we've only really layered a single layer. And depending on your painting style, this is an optional way you can paint uh, it can lead to a bit more contrast because you're putting on a very opaque highlight and a very opaque shadow. But uh, I recommend trying some different methods of paint application and you may find one that works better for you. Maybe this one. So we just did one highlight, one shade and reapplication of the base coat. You may still need to go back and add a little bit more highlighting as needed. Also, if you put your base coat on, the layered base coat on a little bit too thick, you may obscure some of your highlights. So you may have to do a little bit of cleanup work or reapplication. For the veins on the arm, using the same mixture that we already used, but I'm adding a little bit of Oxford blue to it to make them stand out a little more. I do need to point out that veins don't look blue underneath your skin uh, until you reach a certain age in life. So these actually should be just regular skin color, but uh, this is a comic book character, so adding just a little bit of artistic license here. Our skin is done, but we can still add a little bit of color to it, and for that I am adding some violet red to our shadow's flesh, and just punching up the shadows a little bit more and adding more of a red purple color to them. Just makes them look a little bit more interesting. Now comes the real problem area. As I said at the beginning, I know nothing about Crossbones. I did a quick Google search on him, and in most all of the pictures, he just wears straight black, which is very boring to paint. So we're gonna spice it up a little bit by painting black three different ways on this miniature. First of all, when painting a true black, black is our base coat and black is also our shade. So we are halfway done just by base coating the entire miniature black. For the cloth areas, basically his shirt and pants, I'm going with German gray for the highlights, and then I'm mixing in some wolf gray into that, which is a very light, cool gray. And I'm gonna be over-highlighting them a little bit, uh, at least as far as I'm concerned, over-highlighting them, 
to make them stand out a little bit more because we're gonna have black upon black upon black. I wanna get a little bit more color in there so all these little pieces of black stand out from each other. So we have our somewhat neutral gray with the German gray. For the armor, we're gonna go with a very, very cool gray. So we're gonna use blue to highlight that. Stormy blue mixed with black. And then to highlight that, we are once again adding wolf gray. Because we're adding so small amounts to it, because the wolf gray is so light, we can use the same highlight color here that we used in the previous step. For what I'm calling all the tactical bits, the tactical vest and all the straps, we're gonna go with a very warm black highlight. So we're gonna be using, first of all, burnt umber mixed with black. Final highlight is burnt umber mixed with leather brown, which when painting black, this is far more uh, warm, far more brown than I would normally use when painting uh, black, even when using brown for a highlight. But again, we need to add some visual difference between all the different pieces on this figure. For the boots, again, starting with our black base, working off of that, and this time using beige brown mixed with black. Also a very warm highlight for black, but I wanted to go with a slightly different color brown than what we used on the rest of the miniature.
the final highlight on the shoes is beige mixed with bone white and I really like to go a uh, very extreme on the highlights on shoes uh, especially because they're very easily scuffed uh, and you know some of the uncolored leather will show through or whatnot just various damage and dirt so uh, upping the contrast kind of shows a little bit of wear to your typical leather boots. For the mask, we're going to start with that same recipe that we just used to highlight the shoes, beige, brown, and a bone white mixed together. And the reason for that is we got to work our way up to almost pure white, and we're doing that over a black base coat. So there's two different ways you can do that. You can apply three or four layers of pure white, or you can slowly build up to it in three or four layers. The benefit of doing it this way is that we are adding some shadow to it and we can leave some of those previous layers slightly exposed to give us our shade rather than putting on three, four layers of white and then having to go back and add a little shadow here and there. And then the last thing to do is to paint the various metal bits, gun metal, and once again, black added to it because we do want them more muted. Uh, there's no point in having black tactical gear with bright, shiny silver buckles. So we just want a hint of a metallic sheen. And there is Crossbones, ready to go after Batman, I guess. As you can see, there are several different ways you can highlight black to get different effects. You can go warm, neutral, or cool. Just depends on what color you add to highlight it. Uh, in this particular case, especially on the tactical bits, the warm black, I did go pretty far into the brown range, so it doesn't look a whole lot like black now because I overdid the highlights but it still has a black black base coat there so you can tell me it's brown or you can tell me it's black I'm fine with either one so that is it for crossbones and be sure you check out the other videos in the rest of this series on Marvel Crisis Protocol there will be more to come so I hope you join me back when that happens take care bye bye You big slab of man, you!